I'm Barbara Hauser, and I work independently. I'm based in the U.S., but most of my clients are international. Uh, my name is Christian Stewart. I founded a company called Family Legacy Asia three years ago. I provide independent advice to Asian families on family governance. I spend a lot of time working with uh, large business owning families. Well, when I speak to investment professionals, I tie it into risk management. And if they're looking at uh, the portfolio and wanting to limit risk, the biggest risk to an individual portfolio is fighting within the family. So what we do is work hard with the family to prevent those fights. So it's the best kind of big risk management in my view. They say that, if you know, why do you set up a family office? If you set up a family office, the goal is to preserve the family wealth. So the next question is, well, what actually is the family wealth? And when families go deeper into that particular question, then they will usually come to the conclusion that the financial capital is just one part of the family wealth. You know, more important are things like family relationships, family harmony, what they call the human capital of the family. So it's about more than the money. It's about much more than the money. <laughs> Another thing that um, is an important point to me often is that uh, when people talk about family offices and um, you know, preserving family wealth, there's often this assumption that everything is going to be somehow tied together. But um, I think especially with Asian families, they also want to know how they can exit. And so family governance is often very much about helping people to sort through how they can untangle family assets as well. Mm -hmm. And see, I don't run into that part as much. I work a lot in the Gulf region. And one reason I really enjoy the Gulf region is they have such a high value on their families. And they want the family to stay together. They live in compounds. They marry cousins. They want to stay together. And family governance, when it's put in place by the family, can help them stay in harmony during the generation transitions. Otherwise, it's a big risk to have a generation transition. The statistics around the world are that only six out of a hundred family businesses make it to the third generation. It's a high risk area and we both enjoy helping families avoid that risk. I'll take the first part and uh, then Christian will talk about here in Asia. What I say to a family I start working with is imagine that your family is a small country and what do countries do when they get together? One of the first documents they work on is a set of rules about how rules are made, a constitution. So in the book I wrote on family governance, I compare six countries and look at their constitutions. And a family will start with a similar process. Who's going to make the rules in the family? How? How do they change them? So that's the idea of a family constitution, to avoid fights later. Why are they getting popular? So from an, from an Asian perspective, why are they getting popular? Part of it is because in Asia we're starting to see a generational transition. And uh, if you live in Hong Kong, you often open up the daily newspaper and there's a story about some big family falling out and fighting. And um, a family constitution, to me, is, as Barbara said, it's a very important element of it is a process for making joint decisions together as a family. So my thought is that in Asia we've had a lot of wealth which has been in the patriarch first generation stage. Now we're starting to see that transition into say sibling partnerships. When you have a single patriarch running everything, you know, there's no such thing as joint decision making. It's his decision making. On a country <laughs> level it's a dictator. It's a, a dictator. Pure dictator. Yeah. So you're going so you're going for a change of government. Um, we're starting to see a change of government in Asia. And um, Siblings need to have a better way of working together. So that's where the family constitution comes in. Mm -hmm.
You have to start that, I and then I'll add something. But okay. uh, we were talking this morning, and I think this I, a good area that this leads into is the topic of independent directors. And okay. um, so a lot of the families I work with are in a family-owned business. I think it's a, a very typical issue in Asia that you have some siblings who are running the business and feel like they control everything. There may be some other siblings who are shareholders but who do not um, get involved in the business and who tend to be very, very passive. And it's a challenge, I think, for some Asian families to strike a balance between having accountability to the outside shareholders. And one of the Western solutions to this accountability issue is to bring in independent directors so that they can act as a buffer between the outside shareholders mm -hmm. and the inside shareholders. Make sure the outside shareholders have a voice and are being represented, but um, and not interfering in the business. But this is a very useful Western idea, but not being applied in practice. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned accountability, and in corporate governance today, the two key words are transparency, so you want to share information with the family, accountability, which Christian was talking about, and I like to add a third, which is participation. So I would hope that what the West is bringing to family governance field is the whole idea of how important it is for everyone in the family to participate and the process to have a very participatory process in forming their own agreed constitution, family council, board of directors. I think just to add to that without going into detail is the concept of education. Actually mm -hmm. Asian families love the idea of education. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have yet to see Asian families figure out a way that they can have a systematic process of educating outside stakeholders. Mm -hmm. the, but the more education you have of outside stakeholders, the, the more participation that builds. Yeah, and I didn't say we're both uh, trust lawyers by background, and it's the experience of seeing families fall out that has led each of us separately into working more directly with families to help them get organized and prevent those awful fights that you read about in the newspaper.